Hi everybody, my name is Scott Walls. For over 25 years, I've deployed ERP applications for some of the world's largest organizations. During that time, I've taught thousands of people just like you how to discover, use, deploy, and support Oracle's back office software. In this lesson, I'm going to walk through the purchase order application. Please note that this lesson is part of the purchase order course found within the procurement functional area under the discover menus. But before we get started, did you know that you could earn free discovery badges for display on your LinkedIn profile just by watching videos like this one? You can. Stay until the end of this video and I'll show you how. Okay, so let's get started. Key topics for this lesson are as follows. First, seated users for this application. Next, navigation for this application. Third, the application homepage. Fourth, the application transaction or transactions. And then finally, transaction search options, both basic and advanced. Lastly, it's worth noting that this video is focused on what this application does as we do the walkthrough. It is not going to detail how to use it or how to deploy it. Those videos can be found under those menus. Okay, so as you can see here, we are logged in as the seated user, Calvin Roth. Next up, we'll talk a little bit about the navigation. So we are looking at the uh, homepage for Calvin Roth. If we want to navigate into procurement, more particularly in the purchase order application, we'll select the procurement functional area. You can see that changes the application icons. Then we'll select the application called purchase orders. This takes us to the purchase order homepage. So there's three types of homepage. This type of homepage that shows statuses, uh, kind of a call to action, very visual, is what you see for transactions and as opposed to config values. This is the most common um, landing or homepage. And so what it does, it'll show you your recent application or excuse me, your recent activity. If you want details on any of this activity, oftentimes you can just flip this particular tile around. Um, it may also show you a particular call to action. So something requiring attention, something that you've done, something incomplete, something wrong. And then you'll see these types of uh, graphs here. Um, like you, this is orders in process. These are open schedules, um, aging lines. So if I was to select this, it would take me to all the detail of the orders fitting that status or process or what have you. So for example, if I wanna see everything set to pending approved. If I want to change these tiles here, I can do so right up here. Okay, so you see now it brought us into this particular um, manage orders page. But what it really did is it, it went and so I probably asked for everything on pending approval. But you want to know and pay attention to it really went and automatically went into the search variables and set this to pending approval. And so if you don't know to go back and select this to all, you, it'd be a little bit challenging to figure out where every different purchase order is. But you get the idea. So there's application homepage. The application homepage has multiple tiles on it. Those tiles can get you to where you can search for applications. Now, when you're into the PO or purchase order application, it has what's called a task panel. And so if I want to see, and we'll look at this in a second, if I want to see the tasks I can do, look here. If I want to do a search, I go here. If I want to look at recent activities, so some of the different recent orders I've gone into, I go here. If I want reports and analytics, this is where I get to my folders. Obviously, you need to have reports and analytics created and assigned to you or your user. So with that, let's take a look at the tasks or the task panel. And so you can see, even though I'm within POs, I have access to some requisitions. So particularly here, which is in slang called demand workbench, but this is where a buyer can see their approve recs. And you have some different requisitions here. This is the heart of orders, right? So you can look at your existing orders. We'll come back to this in a second. Um, I can create a new order, and then these are more automated features. And because orders relate to agreements, um, and in some ways perhaps deliverables, you can see those two. There's supply base here, so if I want to research my suppliers, and this is really the, what's, what's different than going into the supplier application, is you really start to be you're able to search on your suppliers by certain attributes or criteria like qualifications. And then lastly, there's some administrative tasks that we allow the buyers to do on the front end of the application. So you see those here too. All right. So we went over the seated user. 
We showed a little bit of how to navigate to the home page. We looked at the home page. We just looked here at the different transactions or tasks that can be done. And so then lastly, let's take a look a little bit more at reporting. So if we're talking about purchase orders, we'll go into manage orders and this should look familiar immediately. It look exactly like what we just looked at, uh, at least in certain ways, because we are now just at a place where we can search for orders. So if I wanted to go and search for all the different orders that Calvin Roth did, I just perform that search and you see it got populated. Um, like with any of the other section grids, um, you can also start to, you can push to Excel. You can thread these results down here by high order keys that you see up here. And so you can manipulate the search um, results here. You could also um, push to Excel. You can you know, try to grab several of these and perform an action to them. If you feel like there's a field you'd like to see, right? So I could actually make a report out of this. Um, I could actually add different columns here or take columns away. It's some of the other ways that you can manipulate the results of the search. But it's also very important to note that you have a basic search, which is what we used. And if I wanted to open this, this is the basic search. Now, if I wanted to add additional fields, I have to go into the advanced search. Once I'm in the advanced search, I can then add any number of different PO related fields. Let's say I want to add status to this or ship to, right? So put ship to in here. I could add several of these and I could then select based on a given value. Uh, unfortunately, it's just the PO field. So it's not like you can add project or poet information. Then you have to get into OTBI and create a query, but you are allowed to add different fields to search and take them off. If you always want to see status of, let's say, pending approval, then you could go in and find the status field. And then maybe you say, oh, well, I'm going to find that status and I'm going to set it equal to pending approval. I could actually, I probably wouldn't want both of these, but you get the idea. I could actually save this and then set that to be my um, search when I come into this page. So there's a little bit more that you can do with the search options as well. So that's, uh, that's it for this uh, presentation. We've gone through seated users, navving to the app, application homepage, a little bit about the transactions and the task panel, and then a little bit about the search options as well. So again, if you want to learn more about how to use or deploy the application, then watch the videos under those menus. So that's it. Hopefully you learned something and thank you for watching. Okay. As promised, here are the five steps you can perform today to start earning free badges for your LinkedIn profile. Step one, navigate to panamir.com and either sign in or join now. It's free. Step two, in the upper left, under the Discover menu, select the course that you want to watch and get badged for. Step three, watch all of the different video lessons in that course. Step four, when it's complete, send your LinkedIn profile and the course you watched and your user ID to badges at panamir.com. And then sit back and wait for step five when we attach a badge to your LinkedIn profile.